Right now I'm going to be demonstrating how to change a central line dressing and I'm going to um, assess the central line site. So I'm going to start off with identifying different types of central lines. The first one is a non-tunneled. It's a short-term catheter used up for maybe uh, for about six weeks. There's multiple lumens. Uh, it's indicated for IV therapy, blood sampling, um, central venous pressure monitoring, and um, it has a greater risk of infection. There's a, uh, the, another, the next one is tunneled. It's a long-term use, um, months to years. It's designated to reduce um, risk of infection. It's used to administer fluids, chemotherapy, antibiotics, blood, and paternal nutrition. Um, it lies within the subcutaneous tunnel created between the site of the dermis and site where the cath enters bloodstream. The tissue granulates around the catheter and then that anchors the catheter. Um, another uh, type of central line is an uh, implanted port. It's placed under the skin without any portion of it exiting the skin. It can be used to administer medications such as chemotherapy, fluids, it's used for blood samples. It can be used up for seven days and then has to be changed. Insertion is performed in a surgical setting. Placement is on um, the anterior chest. It's a lower risk of infection and it looks more cosmetically appealing and allows the patient to be more mobile, um, especially with um, ADLs. Last one is the pick lines. It's inserted in the cephalic vein in the arm. It's either a single lumen or multiple. It's inserted for patients who require therapy for several days to months. It's indicated for um, administering fluids, blood, medications, and for blood sampling. When we assess the site of the central line, we're going to be assessing for the condition and appearance. We're going to identify if there's any redness, swelling, tenderness, any discharge from the site. If there's any warmth, which would be signs of an infection. We're also going to confirm the location and make sure that there, um, make sure it's in the correct location and confirm that location. Some documentation that we would like to include um, is the location length, the measurement of the line. We're going to include that skin assessment, assessing if there's any signs of infection, make sure the tissue looks fine. We're going to um, also state what uh, care we perform the dressing change and identify that we are using sterile technique when we're doing that. Some complications are um, infiltrations, sepsis, and pneumothorax, and of course infection of the um, central line dressing site. I'm going to start off with um, changing the central line dressing. So what I'm going to first going to do is identify the patient. I'm going to ask their name and their birth date. Patient is correct. I'm going to identify when's the last time their um, dressing was changed. I've seen the system that was last changed seven days. They're, they have a um, the clear dressing, so that is within protocol. So I'm going to begin changing their assessment. I'm going to gather all the equipment I need. So new dressing change, the cleaning equipment, bandage. I'm then going to have the patient position on their back to prevent um, an air embolism. So what I'm first going to do is apply a face mask to my patient. I'm going to have them turn away. I'm now going to perform hand hygiene before I begin changing the dressing. What I will do next is I'm going to don on clean gloves. Okay. So after I've done on clean gloves and my gown, I will there then put on my gown just in case there's any drainage. Okay, so now I will remove the old dressing. So I see I see the date here seven days ago, somebody else's initials. So what I'm gonna do is discard the old dressing. I'm gonna remove it from the site and discard it. Okay. I'm also going to discard it with my clean gloves. And then I'm going to perform hand hygiene before applying my surgical gloves. Okay, now I'm going to apply um, surgical gloves before I do the dressing change. Okay, I've applied my sterile gloves. So what I'm first going to do before I put on a new dressing is I'm going to inspect the site. I'm going to see if there's any redness, any signs of infection. There's no um, assess if there's warmth, there's discharge, any um, swelling. So I, I see that there's no swelling, there's no um, signs of discharge, any signs of any type of infection. So now what I'm going to do is cleanse the site. I'm going to take my applicator here. I'm going to use 2% of the chlorhexidine and 70% of alcohol. 
and I'm going to go in a back and forth motion for 30 seconds as I clean the site. Okay, I've cleaned the site for about 30 seconds now. Now I'll apply my new dressing. So I have my clear dressing here. So I'm going to just take it off of here. I took it off. I'm going to place it onto my patient. Okay, so I place it over the central line site. Then I'm going to make sure that I date it. I put the time and my initials to the site. Okay. If I have to change the IV, I will per um, facility protocol. I'll then remove my surgical gloves, place them in the appropriate um, discard receptacle. I'll remove my gown. Gown away. Okay, and then I'll perform hand hygiene and I will document my findings.